My name is Bertrand Picard, and I spend my entire life pushing boundaries. Now, I'm setting out on a new journey to explore the future of mobility. Imagine driving where the only emission is cleaner air and filtered water. When we realize that hydrogen power is no longer an ID but an affordable reality, then we understand that change is possible. I'm now making the journey to the heart of Switzerland, to a little village called Gözgen, a place that many people may never have heard about. But I've been told that it's the unlikely home to an energy revolution that is not only the future, but already the reality of the present. Hydrogen basically has three times more energy than kerosene. That's right, per, per unit of mass. Per yeah. unit of mass. Yeah. But it's a tiny, tiny molecule and it takes a lot of work to compress it. Yes. And that's, uh, that's what this compressor is doing. Yeah. We, we had the idea to, to use hydrogen for mobility for a long time and we struggled to find a company willing to produce the trucks at, at an industrial scale. Hydrogen basically, when it comes to the energy shift, is absolutely necessary. And if it's there, then it can be utilized for ships, for trains, for trucks, for buses, for tunnel systems, for emergency mm. systems. For, there are so many applications there um, that it's not just automotive. And it was fascinating for me to see how fast Hyundai accepted this challenge and, and really saw an opportunity to go for it. The beauty after meeting Hyundai is that they were, uh, you, we didn't need to convince them that hydrogen was coming, they knew already. It was an, an, an amazing moment actually when we announced our partnership and what we're planning to do with fuel cell trucks in, in Switzerland. And I remember a lot of astonished faces, so to say, in that press conference because nobody expected that. Noise, yeah. fumes. Yeah. pollution, vibration, and when you arrived, we didn't hear you coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> they should have, I think, a thousand trucks yeah. with hydrogen in Switzerland in three years. Yes. Tell me, when you had the opportunity to drive the hydrogen truck, you yeah. took the opportunity immediately or you were fighting for it? or <laughs> what? How was it? Most of them said no, not really interested. No, really? Yeah, I don't understand. No, Michel, don't tell me that. I thought, yeah, why not? Let's try it. It looks, looks uh, really cool and <laughs> want to test a new technique and, and do something for the, for the future. So the brake I put up. You pull, uh, pull and let it go up. And up. You tell me if I touch anything on the right. <laughs> then it's, it's too late. <laughs> it's large, huh? It's pretty wide, yeah, <laughs> that's right kind of makes yourself as a driver proud to use this technique and, and to be one of the first in the, yes. in the world, actually. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's special. It's everybody's staring at you. <laughs> you are the hero on the road. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> for some people, yeah. I mean, what we're in our partnership here are really proving is that it works, right? I mean, it's a viable business case in Switzerland and the challenge is now how can we do that in other countries as well but I think we're on a good track to prove that it's not just Swiss specific. You know what I find fascinating is that an entire industry rolling on oil, fuel for one century is being turned upside down completely disrupted here in a little village of Switzerland by the new hydrogen industry. So you see, it's not only a question of technologies, it's a question of mindset, of pioneering spirit, allowing the future to start right now.